Hi everybody. We've got a great show for you today, but we realized we didn't attribute the graphic that we're about to discuss. The graphic was made by artist Dan Meth. You can find his stuff at danmeth.com. Enjoy this installment of Second Breakfast. The most important meal of the day, Second Breakfast. Hi everybody. Welcome back to another Second Breakfast podcast. I'm Andy Roth alongside Phil Duvall. Say hi, Phil. Hello, everybody. And let's just dive right into it, folks. If you tuned in last time, and if you didn't, shame on you. We're discussing a, a graphic well, that you can find on our Facebook page. And if you haven't liked us on Facebook, shame on you. That basically rates the various installments of famous movie trilogies. Except they're not really all trilogies and... And some of the ratings are totally insane. And that's why we're talking about it. Not because they're not trilogies, but because they're insane. Uh, some, of the, some of the highlights last time, you've got, uh, yeah, you got yourself some Star Wars, some Indiana Jones, uh, uh, Spider-Man, Lord of the Rings, um, Mad Max, Jaws, a, a bunch. It's, 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 right. phenomenal, it's phenomenal podcasting because it's us. Uh, but it got too long, so we wanted to, to chop it in half. Right? Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. So let's let's dive back in, and we're it's with we're just people. looking out for you people. That's right, that's right. You've got you've got busy lives, but you don't want to miss any of what we do, right? That's right. So you know, um, but we're we're coming back with one that actually there's there's a fair bit of controversy <clears throat> on. Um, yep. And and the controversy stems from the fact that everyone uh, that a lot of people are wrong, but luckily we're right, so so it's okay. And this this trilogy. Back to the future. Back to the future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, Andy. Folks, again, folks, real quick. Sorry, Phil, just interrupt. Uh, again. Oh, yeah. Uh, take a look on our Facebook page to to see what we're talking about. And if not, I think you'll be able to follow along anyway. We're just talking about movies, which is pretty much what we always do. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I want to hear. I was going to say, Andy, whatever you say, I'm, fr- I'm fully prepared to agree with. <laughs> so, Back to the Future... You might not actually. I, I am a little more so. I love all three movies. That's that. Full stop. I love all three movies. If I had to pick one, oh, first, this this gives like an eight to Back to the Future one, or eight eight point five to Back to the Future one, uh, a six to Back to the Future two, and like a five point nine. Too. Yeah, it's like they've. I, I had. I did. You, I don't know if you were watching and you like if you were watching this video earlier yeah. and you saw me like get my face really, really, really close. <laughs> is because I was trying to figure out. Wait, it are they saying three is less good than two? I can't tell. I think yeah. they are. Yep, they are. Yep, um, I just barely. So, I mean, the the kid in me wants to give them all tens. If there's one that doesn't get a ten from me, um, even as the kid. It's number two. It's number yep. two. I I love number two on first viewing because they went to the future and because there was that cool dystopian, even though I didn't know the word dystopian, uh, present, the, the alternate 1985. But there is a mean-spiritedness to two that one and three just don't have. Three mm. gets unfairly maligned because they travel back in time and then it's just a Wild West movie. But it isn't. It's fish out of water the same way the first one is. And it is brilliant. If you don't think so, it's been too long since you've seen it. It is glorious, and it is fun to watch. I would, I would, I mean, I love, I love three. Love. Love. I really, 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 really like two. I, uh, I... Everything you said. That's lovely. That's lovely. Three, three is glorious. Mm-hmm. And people who don't like it, and I'm not naming Zans. I mean names. <laughs> um, they're just wrong. Like, yeah. there's this fantastic episode of The State. I don't know how well you know The State. Not nearly as well. But as my friend, to. but our dear friend Michael Robb and I, we love this. Ep- there's a sketch that they do called "The Bearded Men of Space Station 11." And all learning. these guys are on a space station and they've all got beards. And this one guy shows up on the space station and he's like, all right, I'm here to arrest you all because you're all aliens. 
You've all, you're not the real astronauts. You're all aliens. And they're like, what? He's like, well, you're all aliens because you all grew beards. But people can't grow beards in space. And they're like, well, you, well, you can grow beards in space <laughs> because we have beards. <laughs> and then he's like, well, then you're aliens. No, no, we're people. Like... I'm George, you know me. He's like, no, you're a clone. You can't be the real George. Why? Because people can't grow beards in space because of the atmosphere. And so they go this whole long conversation that's totally ridiculous with Michael Showalter being the guy who's like, you get. And then finally, like, I think it's Tom, Tom Lennon's character just goes, it's not him, though. I don't remember which one of us goes, goes, sir, you're just wrong about the beards. <laughs> like, it's a really long conversation at the end. Someone just goes, you're just wrong about the beards. Like, stop arguing this. And that's sort of how I feel about Back to the Future 3 with people. It's like, you're just wrong about Back to the Future 3. It's a glorious film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and frankly, and frankly, if it had not been as good as the third one, it Wait. would not have, re it, the series would not, in my mind, be redeemable. It would be a really fantastic first, like sort of what yeah. this thing says, a really fantastic first movie, and then some eh, eh, other ones. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the third one really helps to set it up as a phenomenal trilogy. And and I want to use my language carefully here, but helps to redeem the second one in a lot of ways. I agree. I agree. It is... There... There is... There's something that you don't find in a lot of truly great movies. Uh, and I don't know why that is, but there is a sense of truly childlike wonder and glee and joy mm. in the first and the third one and i guess i guess what i what i mean when i say the second one has a mean, spir mean spiritedness about it is it doesn't really necessarily it just doesn't have that but because the third one is what it is the feeling of the trilogy as a whole maintains that just like that just like, you know what? Things are going to turn out okay. You know, mm. and like, I mean, look, I love Double Indemnity as much as the next guy. <laughs> right? Like, right. I love, I love The Apartment as much as the next guy. The Seven Samurai as much as the next guy. But you know what I also like? I also like just plum feeling good at the end of a movie. You know? Yep. At the end of a yep. trilogy. You know what doesn't even yep. do that for me? Lord of the Rings. At the end of Lord of the Rings, I've been through The Ringer. You know, no oh, I want to take a. No, I want to. I don't. Right? I, I don't want to. I don't want to take a nap. I want to lie down for a year. That's right. That's right. And not just because it's long. That's not. Don't make that joke. We've heard it before. But because you're you've been run through the emotional ringer, and Back to the Future, you're like I want to. I want to play on a hoverboard. <laughs> you know, and that's from part two. You know, like like I want to. I want to. I don't know. I want to go back to the 1950s. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yay, segregation. I guess I don't know. That got weird. You need to. You need to take a step back. Hey, Danny, wrap it up. Okay. Well, you gotta. It's time to take a step back. It's true. Let's... Moving on. Moving on. One that I think they almost got right. Die Hard. Almost. Almost. There are now five movies in this series. Okay. So first and foremost, this also is not a trilogy. Right. Yes. Die Hard was a phenomenal movie. Mm hmm. That in the wake of its success, they decided to continue to make them. Yes. Um, so Die Hard One gets about a like a like a nine or a nine five. Uh, Die Hard Two gets like an eight something, and Die Hard Three gets like a like an eight. Right? They're real close no, together. No, like a seven and a half. Okay. All right. Here's the problem with this because because it's right. Die Hard's the best, followed by Die Hard Two, followed by Die Hard Three. Yeah. The, Die Hard Three has its apologists. You're wrong, Andy. Andy, I mean, there it's seems really to be good. it's really good. There seems to be some sort of typo in this in this Die, die Hard one. I think I think um, I think Andrew Thurmond said it best. Uh, friend of the podcast. Friend, friend of the, of the podcast. podcast. Hello, Andrew. It appears that Die Hard did not receive a perfect score. This must be an error of some sort. Yeah, it's Andrew just an error. Heard. You know yeah, what I it's mean? not even a matter of opinion. They just made a mistake. They just made a mistake. They forgot to color in that last line right. with blue. Right. It's perfect. Ergo, 10. If die, here's the thing. If Die Hard's not a perfect movie, and I'm not kidding when I say this. I'm really not. Right. If Die Hard's not a perfect movie, what is? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Also, and this is where you and I are on the same page. Like, 
I think Matrix is one of the great action movies of our time. But when I think about The Matrix next to Die Hard, I'm like, why are we even having this conversation? That's right. That's, that's right. That's right. So, yes. I mean, Matrix hits some, you know, mythological bones for me that I love and does some really and expands on special effects in a way. It, it has that man, it manages to be, to still feel like it's not dated yep. now. Yes. yes. You know, uh, uh, 15 years later, 15, 15 years later. What? Yeah. What is what, what? Matrix? Fifteen years. Oh, I thought you were saying Die Hard. No, no, you're right. You're oh. right. Yeah, that's that's horrifying. It's horrifying that the Matrix was fifteen years ago. Hey, really? Hey, really old person. I know, right? Who? Me? Yep. Okay. I couldn't hear you. Let me turn up my hearing aid. Moving on, the next trilogy, uh, Blade, Blade, Blade One gets like a what would you say seven? I'd I'd call it a six and a half seven. You're ready. Um, Blade Two gets like an eight. Yep. Blade 3 gets like a one and a half, two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't really have a problem with this. I, I, I mean, I, I, Blade I 2, think I think, Bla- is the best. Blade 2 is the best. Giving it an 8 is kind of an overstatement. It's Guillermo del Toro, rating, who I love, rating, but okay. I get the Guillermo del Toro love to some degree. But it's not Pan's Lab. But, it, but not, not all he touches. Not all he touches is gold, You're first right. of all. You're right. Secondly, when you look at this, it's it, the order is correct. Yes. And the scale is correct. Yep. But it's essentially putting Blade in the same category as Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Which is not correct. And actually, if you look at it, it's essentially putting it in the same categories as Lord of the Rings movies. Which is not correct. <laughs> yes. Um, I will say Blade this. Blade 1 is, is, is a really fun B movie. Yes. Yes. So you give it a 5. Yep. You give Blade 2 a 6.5 or 7. Yep. And then you give Blade 3 whatever you need to. I never saw it, so I don't really care what you do. It, it. is terrible. Although Ryan Reynolds is actually very funny. Um, okay. So that's that's nice. It's, you know what? Nice. It is terrible, however, Ryan Reynolds is actually very funny. Is the tagline for almost every movie Ryan Reynolds has ever been in. Agreed. That's right. That's right. Um, ugh, moving on, moving on to one we can't really talk about, Planet of the Apes. First off, it's more than three movies. Second off, I've only seen the first one. Um. Yeah. Same. same I, I feel like, I feel like giving that first one an eight is a little insane. It's, it's a good movie. This is, let's put it this way. The guy who created this chart is clearly Generation X. Because that generation loves Planet of the Apes. Yep. Aren't we Generation X? We are on the cusp. Yeah. We are literally the last year of Generation X slash first year of Generation Y slash Millennial, whatever you want to call that generation. Right. You and I are cusp dwellers. I, 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 I just know I feel disaffected. Okay. Well, that's the Generation X in you. But I will say, I think, listen, <laughs> everybody who was raised by baby boomers feels disaffected. And let me say this, <laughs> deservedly so. <laughs> that whole generation... Thanks for almost nothing. Thanks for birthing us into this cold world. Well, well, I, folks, if you haven't been with us a while, it's been a while since uh, Phil has shown his, his true feelings about the baby boomer generation. Attacked a whole generation and just cart, just all <laughs> right. at once. Just, Mom, Dad, and, and I love you. <laughs> like, I know, you know, I know. Listen, there are exceptions to every rule. It's true. It's true. Uh, and I, and I, uh, I, you know, anyways. Yeah. Moving on, because we should move on. But Generation X, Generation X, like it, like people who are ten years older than us, like who were born, who really were born in the seventies, because you were never born in seventy nine. Right. We and don't so, remember and, and, being. We don't remember President Carter. And and frankly, we don't remember a lot of the eighties. Like like the first half of the eighties, you know. I I only do culturally, pop culturally. Because unlike you, I have two older brothers. That's fair. And right. so I was introduced, that showed me things I shouldn't have seen. Right. So whereas right. like the Culture Club and the A-Team were not necessarily things that you knew intimately or like Duran Duran. Right. These were, these were like, like these were essential parts of me yes. growing up because my older brothers were listening to them loudly or watching them next door yep. to me. So, but yes, but other than that, yes. Yada, yada, yada. Planet of the Apes is good, but it's not that good. Moving on. Yes. The Godfather. 
Oh, I'm so ready to be angry. So Godfather 1 gets like a 9, would you say? I would. Godfather 2 gets 10. Godfather 3 gets like a point five. It is Gets like a 1. Gets a 1. It's the lowest rated. Yeah, but we've said that other things got a 1. This is the lowest rated movie on the board. Either this or Batman 3, but yeah. We haven't gotten to that yet. Right. Yeah. This is um, a mess. This is this is the dumbest thing that's ever happened to anybody. I, the 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 retroactive decision that Godfather 2 is better than Godfather 1, it's an admirable point because Godfather 2 is such a spectacular movie. It is not better than Godfather 1, <laughs> first of all. First of all, Godfather 2 is not better than Godfather 1. Phil. That is stupid. Stupid. Phil, is Godfather 2 better than Godfather 1? Let me think about it for a second. No! <laughs> First of all, no. Secondly, even if it was, which it's not, but <laughs> even if it was, which it isn't, <laughs> but even if it was, to not give Godfather 1 a 10 is Ludicrous. Ludicrous. And the Ludicrous. only reason this person did this was to create a reason. Like, to, to, to he wanted to graphically show that two was better than one. Yes. That's the only reason. Yes. Here's, here's how And that's absurd. absurdity. Here's how absurd. Oh, and well, I'll, I'll tell you how absurd the whole trilogy is in a second. Or the, the grading, this grading of the trilogy is. Also, Godfather 3 is not the worst movie ever. It just suffers. Oh, no. Con- it's a... It's a... Godfather... It's, there, God- there is a lot to love in Godfather 3. Godfather 3, I'm going to say this. Okay. Godfather 3 is a legitimately good film. I agree. I agree. It is, it is, it has the, the, the many, many problems. Yes. Many problems both with what's there and what's missing. Yep. But it is a good movie. Yep. It just pales in comparison to the first two. Yes. Here's here's how here's how insane this this grading is. It made Phil forget the subjunctive mood. If it were, if it were better, if it were, if it were, if it were better. If it were better. I'm not sure I forgot the subjunctive mood or that I just forget how to use it properly. That's fair. That's fair. If Allison if Allison Fasto is listening to this, she is she's rolling her eyes at me. <laughs> she is my she is my grammar guru, hmm. and and I have I have disappointed her deeply. Not as disappointing as this ranking of Godfather 1, 2, and 3, though. No, I'm no. just, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't get, I... I know, I know. Godfather 2 is not better than Godfather 1. Please stop. Puddin', hey, I know. Yes, agreed. You know what will make you feel better? Watching the Godfather series. I can't wait to watch the Godfather series. Indeed. Um, I picked it up on Blu-ray, folks. The, the new, Me- like, like mm-hmm. the restored uh, awesomeness mm-hmm. for, like... 14 bucks. Yep. Thank you, Amazon sales. Yep. Um, so the next one, also not a trilogy, the Rocky At movies, all. At or, all. Or the first, the first three. Uh, Rocky one, getting like a, getting like an eight, five. And a half. Yeah. Eight, five. Rocky two and three getting the same score, which is what do you say, a seven? Rocky one getting a better score than the Lord of the Rings movies. Never mind. Continue. Yeah, I'd say that's yeah. right. Yeah. This is a mess. Rocky One is a wonderful movie. It is it, in a vacuum. It is the best of the three, so that's yep. fine. But here's the problem: Two is terrible. Two is a terrible movie. Here is why yep. it's getting as high a score as as it gets here because it has the ending that people wanted in Rocky One. Here's the problem with that: People you are need, idiots. You need, you need to amend that because it has the ending that white people wanted. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Let's be clear: Black people. Probably loved the beginning of Rocky One. <laughs> and the guy who created this chart, white. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not saying he's wrong about everything at all. I, we've agreed with him on many, many things. Would you say he's white, white. about oh, everything? Oh, he's white. He's, he's white. he's white about everything on this list. <laughs> yes, um, it's true. This, it's is, true. this is, oh, I'm sorry, Dan, your white is showing. This is ridiculous. So, so Rocky Three gets getting like a seven. It's also a bad movie. I would give it like a... I mean, I'd give it like a five and a half. 
Yep. And most of that is because... But it does have Mr. T and Hulk Hogan. Yes, most of that's because Mr. T is a lot of fun and Hulk Hogan has a fun scene. Uh, Rocky II... What is... Thunderlips? Isn't that what he's called? I have no idea. <laughs> I just I'm pretty sure Hulk Hogan's name is Thunderlips. You, you, you researched that. Um, I am... I... I just remember Clubber Lang because Clubber Lang is one of the all-time great character names. Um, and it really is. It's a fantastic name. Indeed. Um... His name is Thunderlips in in in. That's beautiful. In Rocky Three. That's I want to film that and show it every Christmas. It'd be better than Rocky Two. Okay, oh, that's true. Um, the next the next series. Yep. Mm, it's not a trilogy any, anymore. Terminator. Can I say something? It never was really. Sure. But that's fine. That's fine. I mean, it was for the time that Terminator Three came out, but that was never the intent. You're right. Terminator One getting like a six five. Seven. Say? Seven. I'll say seven. Okay. Terminator two getting a ten. Yep. Terminator three getting like a two. Two. I, I'm I'm okay with Terminator two getting a ten. I don't love it. I don't. I mean, I love it. I mean, I I straight love it. I, I, I don't love it. I, I don't love I, it. I, I think it is. Lord of the Rings getting like an eight. Terminator 2 deserves to be in the conversation for best co- for best action movie of all time. Die Hard may win the conversation, mm-hmm. but Terminator 2 deserves to be in the conversation. Terminator 2 also happens to be a sequel that actually can exist without the first one. Agreed. And yet is a legitimate sequel. It's so, very interesting how it pulls that off. So here's the deal. Here, yeah, I agree. I agree with everything you're saying. I, I know that I'm on the losing side of history here. I know it. Okay. I think Terminator, it's a very, very different movie, but I think it is the equal, not as an action movie, but as a movie, I think it's the equal of Terminator 2. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not with you, but I, I, but you are on the losing side of history and of this podcast, but <laughs> I, but I will say this, the Terminator doesn't get, in retrospect, as much respect as it deserves. We have but a, when we you have watch viewer... Terminator... When you watch Terminator and you watch Terminator 2, Terminator 1 feels decidedly dated. Though still terrifying. Yeah. Terminator 2 does not feel dated. That's true. That's true. Um, Which is an amazing thing for such an effects-heavy movie. That's very true. But watching both of them for the first time, and I watched, I don't think I saw Terminator... I don't think I saw Terminator in the theaters because it was 1984, I think. and that you, was a little, you probably didn't. But I saw it real young. I, I'm yeah. convinced I saw it as soon as it came out on video. Yeah. Um, that that movie had a bigger impact on me than T2 did on first viewing. Um, but I think age is a big part of that. I agree. I, 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 I agree. I agree. I just think that... I think that Terminator though, 1 is essentially a horror film. I, that's exactly what I was about to say. I agree. I agree. And Terminator 2 is essentially an action film. Yes. Yes. And Terminator um, 3 is essentially a mess. It's, a, it, it's, it's essentially a mess. We have a... Here's, here's what... Here's what uh, we, have a, we have a viewer, a longtime friend of the podcast, who will go nameless because no. Just no. Okay. Who says that Terminator 1 is actually a terrible movie because the acting is terrible. I don't have anything to say to that person. I, it makes me sad. It, you know who you are. I still love you. I don't know who this person is, but is I'll this the same that. person that's been displaying questionable taste lately in other areas of film? I mean, that doesn't narrow it down, but yes. Yes, it Okay. <laughs> yes, it does. Okay. It does. Okay. Yeah, it is. It is. So Thank there you, go. you. You're welcome. Okay. So I'm comfortable being... The, here, here's the takeaway from this. I'm totes comfortable being on the losing side of history. I'm fine with that. Totally. Yep. Moving on to Rambo. Rambo. This is an interesting, also not a trilogy. Right. First either one. in construction, either in original intent, or in actuality now. That's right. So, Rambo, First Blood, which is the first Rambo movie, getting like a, getting at least a nine there. Like, yep. Getting a nine, I'd say. And two and three getting Fives. fives. My problem with this, I think, I think First Blood is a little high, uh, but it's a really good movie. Um, it, I'd give it, it maybe an eight. I think it's fair. Yeah, I think I think it should be stair step down. I think I think, but two. tiny bit. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, two yes. two two is markedly better than three. 
Yes, but it is not a markedly good movie. So I'm not necessarily I'm not necessarily uncomfortable with that having a five. Frankly. Also, we need to talk about the fact that First Blood is not called Rambo; it's called First Blood. Yes. And then Rambo came out and was called Rambo First, First Blood, Blood Part, Part Two. Two. Yes. And then the third Rambo movie came out and was called Rambo, Rambo 3. 3. And then the fourth movie came out and was, was called Rambo. Rambo. <laughs> it's a mess. There is... It's a mess. <laughs> it's just a mess. I was trying to figure out what to say. It's a mess. It's a mess. The fourth movie? The yeah, best Rambo movie since the first one? Since First Blood? It was, it was, I, re, it was really enjoyable. It was really enjoyable. Uh, I... Also, I also, not for nothing, with the exception of when Rocky ends the Cold War in Rocky IV, uh, the latest Rocky movie, Rocky Balboa, the best Rocky movie since the first one. It's a legitimately good movie. I liked that movie. I, I, I would like a to lot. see Rocky Balboa. I'm interested in seeing Rocky Balboa. I do not agree with your assessment of the ro- of the newest Rambo film, but that's okay. But that's okay. Yeah. Right. It's not in the list, so it doesn't really matter. We don't have to talk about it. That's right. It doesn't exist. This next one is 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 ridiculous on about four hundred and seventy six levels. <laughs> it's the Batman trilogy, which is not a trilogy because we're not talking which about is not, villains. First of all, which is not a trilogy. Yes. Yeah. At all. Yes. Yes. I don't even. <laughs> I it's know. a franchise. Yes. I don't even. Go ahead. Go ahead. You start. These are. This is. Michael Keaton, Michael Keaton, and Val Kilmer. Are the, these are the movies we're talking about here, okay? Uh, Batman 1 gets a 6, 6 and a half, yep. maybe? Yep. Batman 2 gets a, would you say, a 4? Yep. Bat- Batman Returns. Uh, yep. And then Batman Forever, yes? Batman Forever? Yep, that's right. Gets like a 1. They should have called it Batman 3 ever. <sighs> no. No, I, I know. So listen, no. when you throw as much stuff against the wall as I do, some stuff doesn't stick. They cannot okay, be people? gold. They, I'm, not, I'm no. not mad. I'm not mad. I'm not even disappointed. They cannot be Sometimes gold. Sometimes you gotta, tr- you gotta uh, try. Batman 1 and 2 should be way higher. Batman way! 1. Batman 1 should get a 9. Yeah. I can't. I, I understand people who don't give it a 10 because some people have no souls, but a 9 <laughs> is acceptable. Mm-hmm. Batman Returns is a thoroughly underrated film. Agreed. And it is, it is, it, I've seen it a lot as an adult. It, in many ways, it has higher highs and lower lows than the first Batman. Yep. Agreed. It is, it is a more uneven, but a deeper and more, a more challenging and more, uh, a more, a more adventurous movie. It is trying at things. And... The Batman Catwoman chemistry is amazing. Yes, yes, yes. And and the villains in Batman Two are just fantastic. Mm-hmm. I mean, Danny DeVito's Penguin is 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 to me def- is is a career defining performance. Well said, well said. And and I'm upset with Batman Forever's ranking just because even though it's not on here, it leaves nowhere for Batman and Robin to go. Um, There's nowhere to go but down, my friends. And yet you can't. You can't because it doesn't. I mean, I guess it could just be blank. (laughs) That's right. That's right. Um, Yeah. So that's all I have to Uh, say about that. I I, I don't. I don't. The the first two movies are great. They're great. And it's not a trilogy. There's so many problems with this. So many. So many problems. All right. uh, Yeah. And last. And finally, another thing I disagree with (laughs) Alien. Hey, Andy. Do you know what movie series is not a trilogy? Um, Star Trek. <laughs> well, yes, but I was thinking about the Alien movies. Yes, I, I was. I was. If you would ask me that question again, I would have said literally everyone on here that is not a trilogy until we got to Alien. But oh you're absolutely God. right. Alien so many of them. It's, it's. It's just. It's. There are. There are six. There are six movies out right now. That have alien in the title. Oh, no, seven. Oh, no, well, Prometheus doesn't have alien in the title, but you know what I mean. Yeah, there's a lot of alien movies out there. It's not just a trilogy. Yep. Um, and I, I wouldn't even say that that's the three best. But uh, but the first three, Alien, Aliens, 
and Alien 3, or as I like to call it, Alien, Alien Cube. Cubed. <laughs> because I'm a nerd. As well you should. Um, no, that's yeah. the placement of the three. That's perfectly acceptable. Yeah. So we're looking at like a nine for Alien, a ten eight, for... Eight and a half. Eight and a half for Alien. Okay. Eight and a half for Aliens. Uh, a- alien. Ten for Aliens and like a one and a half... Two. Two for Alien Cubed, for Alien 3. Um, well, this is ridiculous. Here's... here. One and two should be equal. One and two should be equal or Alien should be higher. Uh, it's... it like... It, and I love Aliens. I love it. But like... Yeah. Well, that's but, why you're saying it should be equal. Yeah. Yeah. If one has yes. to be une- it's 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 just like Godfather and Godfather Part Two, <laughs> and this is the only time that it, the first two Alien movies will ever be equated with the first two Godfather movies. But no, like, I mean, both are genre defining, yes. and they're different genres, and they're incredibly special and need to be treated with the same amount of respect. That's right. That's right. Period. Period. Yes. And Alien- but I think I think I think calling Aliens better than Alien is at least there's not that much of a difference. Yes, but it, but but it's still it's an even bigger difference than the difference between Godfather one and two on this guy's list, which means madness. <laughs> Agreed. Madness. Agreed, folks. That's all we got. And Andy, are there any lot. trilogies? Are there any trilogies that aren't on this list that we need to talk about? Seriously, do we have any trilogies that that are that aren't here that should be? Uh, and maybe the Child's Play trilogy. I've never yeah. actually seen it. You know what? The Man with No Name trilogy. Oh my gosh. Fistful of dollars, few dollars more in the good, the bad, and the ugly. The Spy Kids trilogy. Yes, the Spy Kids trilogy. The <laughs> that would be interesting because it would go like it would go like eight, <laughs> seven and a half, one. <laughs> um. Uh, the Man with No Name trilogy nine nine ten. Yes, that's exactly yes, yes. Or 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 nine eight ten or ten ten ten. I mean yes, yes. Oh, all of all, oh. all of that, Andy. Oh, Andy. Oh. 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 Andy. Yes. It's not a trilogy because I think of a trilogy as a movie that was set out to be three of them. Uh huh. But there's three of them. Mm hmm. The Toy Story trilogy. We need to talk about the Toy Story trilogy right now. Okay. I need to say this. I've said it on a previous podcast, but I know there are people out there who haven't listened to every single podcast because some people are stupid. The, The Toy Story trilogy is fundamentally groundbreaking in the in in trilogy land. Mm-hmm. Do you remember why I think this? Uh I think so, but I want you to say it because I don't want to be wrong. Because Yep, I got unlike it. I got every it. trilogy that's ever come before, yep. each movie is better than the last. Yes, that's right. Toy Story 2 is a decidedly better film than Toy Story 1. If you think I'm wrong, Shut your face. Right, right. And Toy Story 3. You're just wrong about the beards. And Toy Story 3. <laughs> Toy Story 3 is the best Toy Story movie. It's true. It's so true. It is. It is. It is unheard of. Unher- I don't even want to say the of part. Unheard of. <laughs> unheard of. Yep. In, in trilogy existence. Yes. The Toy Story films. Yes. Les film de Toy Story. De no. Toy Story. No? Mm-mm. Can't give it to you. I, can't, I don't deserve it, so don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I know a lot of different words in a lot of different languages, but I don't know the word for toy in a lot of different languages. Yeah. Pretty much just one language. English. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, no. toy, toy Story Trilogy. Toy Story <laughs> Trilogy, Andy. Toy Story trilogy. What other trilogies? I'm trying to think. Are there other trilogies that we should be thinking about? This is a really interesting. Uh, uh, I think we've done it. Ninja Turtles. Well done. Well done. I'm gonna go. Ready? I'm gonna rate them right now. I'm gonna rate them right now. Hit me. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one six. I know you think it should be higher. It shouldn't. I don't. Think I'm gonna it should go. Be higher. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go <laughs> six three one. Really? You're going. You're going lower for for Secret of the Ooze. Than the first one? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Andy. It's just, oh yeah. It's, it's been a very it's long got time a vanilla. Since it's got a vanilla ice cameo. You're right. I'm 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 a little surprised you gave it three. Teenage, You're right. Teenage You're Mutant right. Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is better than you remember, but worse than it was as we were children. <laughs> how's that? How's that for a scale? The, that's good. That should go on the poster. I know, I like and that. I know we've. I now, Andy. I want to, and I want to <laughs> live in the land of make believe for a second before we go. Okay. Okay. 
I want you to pretend that 15 years ago, uh, uh, 17 years ago, George Lucas came out with another trilogy of Star Wars movies, a prequel of them. Oh, I want sure. you just to pretend, okay? Right. Sure. We'll call the first one, I don't know, Phantom Menace. Now, this didn't really happen. No. No. Because that would be a terrible film. Yes. But uh, then he called the second one Attack of the Clones, which you have to admit is a cool title for a movie that never happened. That's... <laughs> Although... And then let's just say the third movie, which never happened and doesn't exist, I'm going to call it something cool. I don't know, like Revenge. Because the first Return of the Jedi was going to be called Revenge of the Jedi, and then George Lucas realized that there's no such thing as Revenge Adventure. for Jedi, so right. it's Return. So we're going to go Revenge of the Sith. Sure. I'm going to call these movies that, but they never happen and they never don't happened. exist. Let's pretend that they did exist, however, and rate them. Andy, okay. what do you think? I'll go uh, three, five, six. No, three, six, six. No, three, five, five. That's what I'm doing. I am going to go two, one, no, <laughs> two. Three, two. Okay. Okay. And I, I will defy. I will defy. First of all, y'all are lucky. I gave any of you more than a two. I, I, am I'm, I'm a well, big. Th- doesn't matter because these movies is, never occurred. Right. What, what these this movies never is, I'm happened. A big old softy. Because you're right. You're right. Right. Although, or, I mean, I, I could have gone. I could have gone one, 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 just to just. Right. You know, binary code this thing. It's true. What else are we going to say? Uh, I'm going to say this. I agree with you in a vacuum about Attack of the Clones being a, a fun title, especially for a movie that didn't exist, but I will I will remind you of this red carpet moment, and then we can go. Uh, while doing a red carpet, like a like a, a premiere or a press junket for Moulin Rouge, um, Ewan McGregor uh, and Nicole Kidman were walking down, and, and they were being accosted by flashing lights and, and microphones and stuff. And one of the reporters said to Ewan McGregor, did you hear this? The, the subtitle for uh, Star Wars Episode Two has been announced. Uh, it's, uh, it's being called Attack of the Clones. And, and Ewan McGregor was like, what? And he goes over to Nicole Kidman. He goes, Star Wars 2 is being called Attack of the Clones. And she goes, what? No. <laughs> like they were just like incredulous that that could be used something you'd call something? Indeed. Indeed. Um, and now wow. that I think about it, I might have that reversed. It might have been Nicole Kidman who went over to Ewan McGregor and said that. But and I, he was just like, no. I, either way it happened, it's right. You know what I mean? So there's that. Folks. It's got, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, but it, but it's all terrible. Um, it didn't happen, Andy. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. These are, th- those, were not the, those were not the prequels we were looking for. They were not prequels <laughs> at all. Those prequels never <laughs> happened. happened. Folks, this uh, has been this has been fun. This this has been fun. This is this has been this has been a, a delight, a pip, if you will. I will. Wait a minute, Andy. Before we go. Oh God, what? No, no, you're no. gonna be happy about this. Okay. The Iron Man trilogy. Ooh. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, I'll go eight five. Seven. Mm. I will go eight seven seven or eight six seven. Okay. I I and and if you catch me on the right day, I might put Iron Man three at the same level as Iron Man one. I agreed. I agreed. I yes. I, I think it's I think the I think the fact that Shane Black made it like made people decide not to like it. And the fact that it's coming at a time of like extreme superhero fatigue hmm. from f- from film critics. Okay. That's fair. There's, I don't know. But, but 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 maybe. Sure. Maybe. Anyways, okay, we can go now. We're allowed to go now. <laughs> Folks, this has been our discussion of a really really weird trilogy chart. Again, check it out on our Facebook page. Uh, if you have questions, shoot them to uh, second breakfast podcast at gmail.com. And, uh, and uh, you know what? We're going to talk about something soon. So you'll see us again real soon. For Second Breakfast, I'm Andy Roth, and that's Phil Duvall. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. The most important meal of the day, second